On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, you'll see how to keep your secrets secret. You really need to watch this one. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today are Andrew Chung and Alicia Chan. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. PMs in Visual Studio land, and we're going to be talking about secrets management. Now, you might think, well, that's an odd topic. It's the world of open source. There are no secrets anymore. But in fact, your code can contain all kinds of secrets, like connection strings and passwords and uh, app IDs that uh, you get if you're putting your app in Azure or et cetera. Um, you probably have those in a config file, thinking, oh, well, you know, it's easy to do. And then if you're not diligent about it, you know, that stuff's now at risk. You put something in a GitHub repo, there's robots that parse through the repos looking for stuff like this. Next thing you know, you're in the news because someone just spent $50,000 of your money doing Bitcoin mining or something <laughs> like that, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It's a serious exactly. problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're going to talk today about some things we can do to prevent that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and uh, we're going to go through some of the scenarios you just covered uh, where we are mm -hmm. storing connection strings today in various con uh, configuration files, right. um, how we can look to mitigate that better if you're working locally, and then as you work with Azure uh, components, uh, how you can interact with the Azure Key Vault mm -hmm. and store your secrets there. Cool. 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 So um, I've got a demo pretty much kicked off and ready to go. Okay. Uh, the main thing about this is just it's an ASP.NET uh, Core application. Um, a lot of these features are actually already in uh, Visual Studio 2017. Yeah, like, look, there's this uh, green <laughs> squiggly that now yeah. shows up, basically, yep. which is an awfully polite way of saying, um, maybe you shouldn't do that. <laughs> exactly, I, exactly. I might have gone for a different way of doing it, like a big red <laughs> flashing <laughs> hammer hitting somebody on the head, but... Yeah, we'll work on the sound <laughs> file for our alarms blaring yeah, and uh, exactly. all that fun stuff. But yeah, so... Um, I've got here just a new web application. The only thing I've changed is uh, the this page itself, mm -hmm. um, where I've added in a couple of secrets to show that it is reading off of the app settings file. This is a common place where people store their connection strings today. Yep. Um, and then I've got an index uh, HTML file, which just will call out the values that are that we're looking at. So right now, if I go ahead and run this. And I noticed there was also a warning down in the errors letting yes. you know as well. Yep. We will be uh, covering all of the squiggly lines and warnings okay. very shortly. Cool. Yeah. So right now, what you see, what you see here is uh, the two secrets that we just covered, mm -hmm. which is right here um, in the app settings JSON file. And today, you know, as I said, if you write your secret in here, app setting secret, app setting nested secrets, mm -hmm. these are the values that are getting read. Okay. Um, in Visual Studio uh, 2017, if you're working locally, you may not want to connect to any Azure uh, components or really any cloud components first. You want to make sure your app works right. as is. Um, one place we've in, uh, inserted to try to mitigate secrets is this uh, feature called Manage User Secrets. What this is is a local JSON so file. So when did that show up? Uh, so this shows up where <laughs> moving too quickly. If you right click on the project. Right, but when was that added? Was that uh, this was added actually. Uh, I don't know exactly which version it was, but okay. it was uh, in 2017. Okay. Yeah, um, and this is a local secrets uh, JSON file. What this means is that if you do share your application, this file will not get carried forward. Okay. Yeah. So this is very important. Obviously, if you're working locally, you've got your uh, own hashes, keys, and right. everything. You don't want that shared with the team. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, so this has a secret JSON secret where if I run it once again, you may have caught a glimpse of that earlier, but you'll see in the third secret, uh, this is the value that's being called out. Okay. So today, updating secrets is fairly simple. If I go into here and just so change did the you, secret. So did you show us manage user secrets? Because I... Yes. OK, so, so what happens click. when you do that? Uh, that's what this does. It opens up a secrets JSON file. Oh, OK. Yeah, so this Got is it. another place where you can store secrets. OK. Uh, this is a safer place if you're working locally. OK. Yeah. Um, if you ever want to update your secrets uh, name, you can just go right in here and say updated. Pardon my typing, secret. And is that a .NET Core only feature? Does it work with full framework? Great question. So uh, right now it's a .NET Core only feature. Okay. Actually, in 15.8, uh, which will be released uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, we're going to introduce this feature over to the .NET 
projects as well. Okay. And you enter it the same way. You mm -hmm. would right-click on this. You would see the manage user secrets. Okay. This doesn't change at all. The uh, only change is that instead of a JSON file, it'll be called secrets.xml. Okay. It's still a local file. It will not carry over if you publish your application. Okay. Cool. And then show me how you reference the contents of that. Sure. So right now, I've just got a basic uh, reference here where I'm just tagging in. I've got the secret name, and then okay. I'm just calling uh, the actual secret. Okay. Um, cool. Alicia will actually speak to how we look into the secrets as, at, at runtime. Okay. Cool. So um, did you want to cover a little bit about uh, yeah, detecting sure. secrets? Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to take us back to our app settings.json file where people normally have secrets. Um, so the secrets that we looked at before, we just kind of made up some stuff with different values. Right. Um, this one that we're looking at here is say you've got an application and you're connecting it to something real like Azure Storage. Mm -hmm. So this is more so the format of what a real secret might look right. like. So what we're adding in here is that we've got this googly line saying, hey, like you really shouldn't have these credentials in your code like this. Mm -hmm. um, um, and we've got this warning for you as well. So if you're um, kind of looking through your different files, you can be like, it's in this file, this line. And um, then you could go into the settings and change that to an error if you didn't want it to just be a warning, right? Um, we're still working on um, that feature. Oh, for okay. now. Yeah, that's something that, to come for the that'd future. Be a, that'd be a good feature to have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So. I'm going to hover over this. Um, so what we also added in here is kind of this um, quick action suggestion for mm -hmm. this specific type of warning. So looks like we found a storage key in here. So I'm going to click on the light bulb to see what options we have. Um, I don't know why my other option isn't here. So, uh, so the, part of the reason uh, it, right now it only shows the moving to local secrets JSON is that um, there should be another option to move to Key Vault yeah. as okay. well. In this case, we haven't walked through how to set up a Key Vault okay. yet, and we'll do this uh, actually right now. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. So. so actually do that. Move the secret to the local secrets JSON and show us what happens. Yeah, sure. So this is similar to the manage user secrets thing that we showed you earlier. Mm -hmm. This is a different entry point to it. So um, if we were to move the secret to the local file secrets.json, then what happens is we're removing the sensitive part of the secret out of your code. Mm -hmm. um, and we're kind of leaving behind a comment here to tell you, hey, like we moved it to secrets.json. Um, and then you can access it through manage user okay. secrets. We also have an info bar here. So if you want another entry point to get to your manage user secrets, mm -hmm. you can also click here. It takes okay. you back to the spot. Cool. <laughs> OK. Yeah, cool. Um, OK, I guess we can show the key vault yeah, scenario absolutely. as well. And then, so before we do that, so sure. now, what you've done is you've taken plain text and you've moved it from one place to another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you then wouldn't check secrets.json into GitHub. So mm -hmm. no one could, could get it that way. Yes. Um, then when you build the application, that gets built in as part of the executable or the binaries, and then you're, you're covered, right? Is that For basically? So at runtime, mm -hmm. um, this is now just part of the application's code. For your local application, right. absolutely. OK. Mm -hmm. OK, cool. Yeah. So that was for if you're doing a local application. So say you want to go beyond that. Um, mm -hmm. You want to be able to like, share this application with other people and still have it work. Um, so we're going to add in a key vault so that we can store our secrets in a different way okay. um, that allows for this to be more versatile. So if you go to connected services, um, you can add in a key vault, and it's really easy. So you go through this menu. This was a feature that was introduced in 15.7, mm -hmm. so it was our pre uh, last release. OK. All right. And so this obviously assumes you have an Azure subscription. Correct. I'm signed, one of, signed in with my Azure subscription right, right now. Yeah. Um, and then presumably what you're doing here, let's say someone doesn't have Azure, they're not doing cloud development, but they want to be able to store mm -hmm. their keys in Azure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to assume that the cost of this is fairly low since you're just storing uh, text somewhere, right? Much lower than losing that Bitcoin. Exactly. Yes, Probably a lot pennies. less than that $50,000 we talked about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. OK. Cool. Yeah, well, it's actually uh, just a few cents. I believe it's three cents uh, per transaction. So. OK. Yeah. And you can also review that here if you want to check okay. right before yep. you make this. That's a pretty good deal compared to the cost <laughs> of not doing it. 
All right, cool. So yeah, we take you to here. Um, you just got to pick your subscription, um, and we'll go ahead and make a new key vault for you okay. by default, or you could pick through existing ones that you might have. Okay. Yeah. If you hit the edit button, that's where you can get into some of the advanced options, mm -hmm. um, where you start understanding about the resource group, what type of pricing tiers, and where you want your key vault to live. But for the most part, oh. if you're just getting started for the first time, we've removed a lot of those hurdles. So and key just vault has up front. different pricing tiers. Yes. That's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so if we're okay with those, then we can move on and add our key vault. Awesome, and you may have noticed a bunch of text there. What mm -hmm. we're doing through Connected Services when you hit that Add button, it's not magic. All that we're doing is looking for the NuGet package, we're installing it, mm -hmm. and then we're adding the environment variables into launch settings to reference the actual key vault. Okay. Yeah, um, cool. if you hit the output window, down at the bottom there as well. And then well, that's just a normal Azure resource. You can go to the portal and take a look exactly. at it and mm -hmm. see it. So and once you've added yep. it, like you can see here, there's three settings on the right side okay. where you can start, uh, it'll get you right into the key vault that you've just hooked up. And then presumably if you changed these settings, you could do it through the portal. Mm -hmm. So these are actually links out to the portal. Right, okay, um, cool. Yeah. Yep, excellent. All right, cool. So now we've got this key vault linked up. So I'm gonna go back to our app settings. Um, and I'm going to undo the move of our secret so I can show you what it would be like if you were to move it to um, Key Vault. Okay. Cool. So let's go back to here and our quick actions. Just have to give it a second. Yeah, so you'll still see the squiggly line, mm -hmm. you'll still see mm -hmm. the error because we just yeah. undid our move right. over into the uh, secrets.json file. So um, we're going to revisit our quick actions here. And you'll see that now that we have ah, a key vault hooked up. Okay. Is the option. Yeah. So say I want to move my secret to Azure Key Vault now instead of secrets.json. And that key vault is set up at the project level or at the Visual That's Studio correct. level? That's correct. You can have one yeah. key vault per project. Okay. Mm -hmm. is, and you're thinking about whether you'd have a key vault for across projects? Is it a Visual Studio setting? Or is that yeah, so when on user the, needs? Absolutely. So uh, the connected services portion that we showed earlier, right. you can uh, configure the same key vault across multiple okay. projects if you okay. want. Okay, cool. All right. So let's move our secret to Azure Key Vault. Um, so since you've got a key vault configured, we just confirm that you want to move the secret mm -hmm. into um, this key vault. So let's click OK. Um, and then we'll wait. Cool. So um, we've got this notification that our secret has been moved to Azure Key Vault, and we can access it um, through connected services, which is that page that we showed you earlier. Okay. Um, so let's look back at our source code real quick. So once again, we've removed the sensitive portion out of your code into Key Vault um, and left behind a comment of what happened to it, telling you that you can access it and find it in Azure Key Vault. Okay. And then where is, so somewhere is <laughs> stored what Key Vault to work on, and then are the credentials cached? Do I have to sign in to Azure? Did the app to signs in to Azure on my behalf at runtime? Uh, so when How does you that all work? right, so when you set up your key vault uh, for the project, it's using your credentials and okay. auto automatically grants your key vault that you've just created user access. So okay. every project that your user is tied to will have access to that key vault. Um, It'll look slightly different when we talk about publishing the app into Azure, mm -hmm. at which point the access will be granted at an application level. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to visit our connected services page um, so that we can go to the portal because I want to um, show you guys that the secret was actually moved yep. into the portal. So if you go to this option, manage secrets stored in this key vault, it'll bring us to the key vault um, to the page where your secrets are all listed out. All right, cool. So if you'll look here, you've got a list of secrets. Yep. And so you can go through and click and confirm that the value is indeed um, what it was supposed okay. to be. Um, and then I also want to go back and rerun the app again, since now your secret is not in the code anymore, but right. the app should still run. Mm -hmm. right. And then again, if you don't, if you're running offline, if you don't have access mm -hmm. to the cloud, then the secret can't be retrieved. Absolutely. Okay. In which case, you'll yeah. get an error. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and while you're running this, it might be uh, good just to, we've covered about uh, moving secrets into various places. Mm -hmm. So uh, Alicia, could you tell us a little bit about how uh, at runtime we read our secrets and 
which one's the most important one? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so for these secrets, if you, um, since we've got the Key Vault hooked up through connected services, mm -hmm. what Visual Studio does is it will look for the secrets in different places based on a precedence that it's got set. So Key Vault is the most secure one, so it'll look there first to see if it can find your secret there. Okay. And if not, it'll look through environment variables that you have. And then if not that, then it'll look through secrets.json. Oh, finally okay. So you would do Key Vault because mm -hmm. it's most secure. Yep. But It'll then also have the secrets.json, which is less secure. Yep. Which then so if you have that a, defeat the purpose. No, <laughs> actually, if you have the secure. same secret, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you have the same key with different values in various places, the mm -hmm. Key Vault one is the one that will be used okay. because it's the most secure. Okay. And then you would just hope that if you change the secret in one place, you got to change it in all. Right, which is why when we move the secret over, we actually remove the actual secret right. and leave a comment to let you know, okay. hey, right. your secret's gone to this new magical place. Okay, <laughs> yeah. cool. All right, let's revisit our web app. And you'll see that it is still running, even mm -hmm. though it's now reading the secret out of Key Vault and not right. out of app settings JSON anymore. Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so these features, um, we're looking to ship them kind of um, in the next month or so. So it would be great to um, be on the lookout for those. And they'll be inside the CD for VS extension. Uh, all of the new stuff with the quick action and detection. Oh, OK. okay. So that stuff's coming in 15.8. Mm -hmm. Is that right? OK. Yes. That's the squiggly line, the uh, warnings that, uh, ah, okay. that show up as warnings right okay, now. Cool. And the action of actually moving the secret over into secrets.json mm -hmm. or the yeah. key vault. Okay. And then the ability to do something similar for WinForms, WPF, UWP, non.NET Core apps, mm -hmm. I guess, MVC, ASP, anything not .NET Core. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably could have said it that way to begin with instead <laughs> of going through the whole list. <laughs> um, that's coming. Oh, that's a great question. So right now, you can actually hook up the Key Vault to .NET projects as well. OK. Yeah, it's not only limited to .NET Core. Got it. Um, and then we'll look to ex uh, roll the extension out as the Key Vault supports uh, gets rolled out to the various project types. OK. Yeah. OK. So it is coming soon. We don't have an exact date All right. right now. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Um, one, last thing wanted, one last thing that we wanted to show you yeah. is uh, so far, we've been working locally. Right. And it's great, right? Like, you know, in your basement, you're coding, you can see that your secrets are now working. Yes. Um, well, when it comes time for your application to be published out to Azure, um, we've got a feature coming out in 15.8, which will be in a few weeks, mm -hmm. uh, where if I go through the publish flow, uh, this will look the same for any application you work through. So you're just publishing your application um, into Azure. It's moving the bits over at this point. Mm -hmm. And this is for both .NET Core and .NET Framework apps that are being hosted in Azure? That's right. OK. Cool. So once you've published your application, what you'll see is that there's a little warning here mm -hmm. that tells you, hey, your application relies on secrets. Um, your local app has been configured to handle secrets. However, your published app right now, you can tell, has no key vault associated ah. with it. So it's just letting you know hey, that if you do proceed with this application, why is that? Why wouldn't it default to using the same key vault? Great question. Because uh, so this is an app that we're publishing out to the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and we would like to give the users a choice of which key vault to use. By default, if they go through Visual Studio, um, they'll be able to associate the same key vault that we've been using already. However, you, like if you work in a large corporation where you have a separate ops team that manages all of these connections, especially mm -hmm. as you go out to various uh, test environments and production environments, you may not want to hook up your test key vault with your production key okay. vault. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at this point, assuming that I want to hook up the same key vault, all I have to do is click Add Key Vault. And it'll already say, hey, your existing key vault with your local project can be connected to your published application. Mm -hmm. And if I hit yes, what this is, does is it adds the environment variables, the same one we uh, added earlier into our, our local application, out to the published application. Okay. And so you'll see this key vault has been set up. And then how would I choose a different one? Uh, you would have to go out to the Azure portal, okay. and you'd be able to change your uh, environment variables okay. to reference different key vaults. Okay. Yeah. Um, Whoops, so I just actually published that, <laughs> hit that locally. What yeah. I wanted to show was uh, the published application. So let me just stop this since we know the lo local application All works right. and we'll play with the published application. <laughs> okay, so before you configured it, now you're actually doing the publishing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. All right, and uh, so when we see the published application, there will be one slight difference. I'm going to 
be curious as to whether or not you can pick that out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's a missing value. All right. Secret JSON my secret, mm -hmm. which is the one that was stored in the separate file. Right. When it's we were not working there. locally. Because oddly enough, Azure doesn't have the ability to tunnel back into your computer and read things off the hard drive mm -hmm. yet. Right. So that's okay. where you can kind of see the value of both sides right. of the effects. OK. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Great. <laughs> so uh, again, to review, the, the stuff you showed is coming in 15.8. All of it coming in 15.8? Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's actually kind of quickly yeah. go through the process. Um, what we talked about today was working with secrets. Mm -hmm. In today's world, you can um, store your secrets in app settings, which is a very common place for web right. developers store their secrets. Um, what's already been released is the ability to right-click on your solution. And this is for both uh, .NET Core as well as .NET applications okay. and manage user secrets, which will lead you to this local secrets.json file. Or secrets.xml. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So that's in there today. That's in there today. All right. Right. Um, one part that we visited was uh, Alicia got, uh, talked about moving your secret over yep. into the key vault or the local secrets.json file. Right. That's going to be available within the next month okay. uh, through the CD for VS extension. Okay. Okay. Um, adding a key vault through connected services exists today. Okay. Right. So that whole process we clicked through onto uh, connected services, mm -hmm. being able to play with a key vault okay. that exists today. The part that will be coming up in a few weeks in 15.8 is as you're publishing, getting that warning that shows, hey, your, okay. your key vault has not been added. Yep. Do you want to proceed with it and having the same key vault tied to your published application? That All will right. be in a few weeks. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so very, very easy tools, very cool stuff. Um, makes it dramatically less likely that you accidentally give your secrets away mm -hmm. and seems pretty straightforward to manage. That's Absolutely. cool stuff. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, take a look at that. If you're not doing it, you really need to. Um, highly recommend it, and hope you enjoyed that. We will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.